Alina came from an ordinary rural family. Her parents lived poor, and her main dream was to get out to a normal life and get her mother out of her alcoholic father's house. The girl was of average ability, but her persistence in her studies paid off. She finished high school with a gold medal and managed to win the regional Olympiad in computer science, institute and an assignment at a big firm for computer information security. As the years went by, Elena was climbing up the career ladder, and now she's the director of a company with a very impressive salary, not to mention additional financial bonuses. Then she was called to a large Moscow concern. The money was so good. Alina did think twice about it. In addition, a luxurious country house had been purchased in her name. A luxurious country house in her name. On one condition, that she worked at the concern for five years. Her father, a drunkard, had died long ago. But she took her mother with her. To live in the countryside in peace and tranquility was wonderful. There was enough money for everything. All that was left to think about was her personal life. Alina noticed that she began to receive. The owner of the concern began to pay attention to her. He noticed her when he visited the director. He was 20 years older than Alina, a widower who dreamed of having an heir by the end of his life. Eventually, the woman agreed to register their relationship. In his joy, the groom signed over an impressive share of his shares to the bride. The wedding went off in style, and the young bride moved in with her husband. For the last few years, she and her mother lived well enough, but his house was a real castle a three-story mansion with high ceilings, and stretched out in space. It was astonishingly luxurious in every room. Their love seemed to last indefinitely. A year later, their baby girl was born and their happiness was extinguished, like a lamp that burned too brightly. The girl was seriously ill. All of Oleg hopes, on a reliable air, that he had imagined in his head, were irrevocably ruined. He was tearing and tearing, but there was nothing he could do. The doctor said that her mental faculties would be like a normal child, but the girl would be in a wheelchair forever. The little girl grew up. Tutors began to teach her, but she began to demand more and more of her mother's attention. It was important that the girl didn't grow up to be spiteful. Oleg was annoyed that his wife was becoming more and more distant from him. He himself with his daughter practically didn't talk. Finally, he began to think it was shameful to have an invalid in his house, as it seemed to him, spoiling their perfect life. The man demanded that his wife give her daughter to an elite boarding school in Europe. But Alina threw a huge tantrum and told him that between his daughter and him, she would always choose her daughter. Well, get out, he shouted in a huff. The next day, arriving home, the owner found neither his wife nor his daughter. He was furious. The last thing he needed was for his wife to run away from him. It was an embarrassment to the whole town. The man first begged, then demanded to come home. Then he threatened to take his daughter and then put her in a boarding school. The man noticed something in his wife's face. If you dare do that, I'll sell my stock to your chief competitor. I think he'll teach you how to work. Alina declared. It was as if Oleg had received a punch in the gut. There was no way in hell he was ready to let a competitor into his company. Slightly relieved, he offered. All right, let's make a deal. All right, I'll give up our handicapped girl and you sign over all your shares to me. A day later, they signed the papers. To the mutual pleasure of both parties, Oleg was even glad that he was legally rid of the girl. What was upsetting was that he had to part with the smart and beautiful Alina. Alina told her daughter that from now on they would be to live with her grandmother all the time, and her father would live separately. So a few years passed, and he had turned 14, and her mother made sure that she never heard what her father said about her. It served her poorly in this case. The girl was attached to her father even though he came to her room very rarely. But he visited their home regularly, trying to win back his ex-wife. The girl was especially upset by the move. After her father's castle, her mother's mansion seemed miserable. She was finally enraged by her mother's announcement that she would have to sell it too, since the money had dropped considerably, and there would be nothing to support it. Enya threw a terrible tantrum. She threw herself off the wheelchair and started banging her hands and head against the floor. She screamed that her mother was a soulless person, had left her father because of her whims and deprived. Her, Enya, a normal father, and a normal life. There was no way Lena could tell her daughter that her father had simply turned out to be her father in writing, exchanged it for stock. The mansion was put up for sale. One day, Enya was driving around the yard alone, when suddenly she saw her father enter the gate. He walked past and headed toward the girl's mother. 
Ten minutes later, he came out of the house. Enya, excited that her father was sure to come to her, waved her hands. On seeing her, the man stepped forward with determination. His eyes were frantic as Alina had once again told him that nothing would ever happen between them again. Enya, though she was waiting for her father, but she was still scared. Ah, oh, I need you, he said angrily. He grabbed Enya by the handles of the baby carriage. He quickly wheeled her to the gate that the girl began to jerk from side to side. Daddy, be careful. What kind of a father am I to you? The man suddenly slapped the girl in the face. I can't have handicapped children. Enya was frightened to silence. And in the meantime, he managed to roll her out of the gate and shove her without a stroller into the car. Where are we going? Where you belong? If it wasn't for you, Lena would never have divorced me, but she chose you. So I have to get rid of you. Maybe then things will get better in my life. After a while, Oleg drove out of town. Five kilometers later, he turned off at the river and stopped the car. Then he pulled the girl to the bank. Thoughts raged in his head. It was tempting to end it all at once. But after all, she was his half-blood daughter. Oleg turned around and walked to the car. All right, let her live, he decided. The man got behind the wheel and drove away. Enya sobbed at the top of her voice. Only now did she realize who was the real culprit of all their troubles. But it was too late. It was evening, the mosquitoes were biting, and she was hungry. Only who would find her here, except in the morning. But overnight, she'd just freeze to the ground. The girl tried to crawl to the houses in sight, but she didn't have the strength for long. She humbled herself. I guess I have to die here. For my stupidity, she thought. A young boy was walking along the shore. He remembered that he had forgotten to remove one of the muzzles from the river. Of course, it was too late, but suddenly something got in there after all. Suddenly the young man heard a soft cry. It was obviously a girl crying, and she wasn't far from the shore. Hey, who's there? He called out and ran towards the voice. He saw a girl about 15 years old, dressed in the latest fashions. Hey, what are you doing here? I was left here, she said through her tears. Who was dad? And she burst into tears. It was so wild that the boy decided not to go into it and just help the girl. Come on, he held out his hand to her. I can't. At that moment, his eyes fell on the girl's legs, and he realized that the girl was handicapped. Trying not to be terrified, he grabbed her in his arms and dragged her toward the house. It's okay, Grandma will figure it out, he decided. Ennio was already so cold that she was happy to snuggle up to the warmth of a human being and suddenly dozed off. She woke up in the warmth when someone was undressing her. She frighteningly tried to pull away, but when she saw the nice old lady and finally passed out, at this time in the mansion of Alina, was awake. The women were crying. They called the police and said that an invalid girl was missing. After some hesitation, the police officer finally took the report and said that they would be looking for her. In the morning, the gate to the cottage rang unexpectedly. The mother and grandmother raced to open it. A young man was there and there was a cab parked a little further away. Alina, yes, the woman answered, feeling her legs buckle. Is it your daughter who has disappeared? When she saw the woman turn white and evidently about to fall down, the young man managed to lean her against the gate. At that moment, the cab door opened and Lena heard, Mom, her little girl was sitting there and she was alive and unharmed. The mother rushed to the car and started kissing her daughter. After that, the young man, took Annie's arms and carried her into the house. The grandmother and mother, who didn't understand anything, and the mother joyfully opened the doors. After hearing the horrifying story from her daughter, Alina wanted to sue her ex-husband, and there was a witness to his activities. She was dissuaded by her mother. Yes, the act was appalling, but that kind of citywide publicity. The girl didn't need that kind of publicity. She and Sasha became very good friends, and now they spent most of their time together. The boy was tough, and that was a guarantee that his father wouldn't go near Enya again. Three months later, Alina found out that the owner of the concern, her ex-husband, had suddenly crashed his car, and all his property was bequeathed to her. In spite of her father's actions, Alina and her daughter came to the funeral. In her heart, Enya forgave her father, even though she knew he never loved her, but only considered her an obstacle. Life is the best teacher, but charges very dearly for its lessons. The paralyzed daughter blamed her mother for leaving her father. Until it was his fault, she found herself in a dangerous situation herself. Fortunately, everything ended well for her. 
They forgave her father. Only it was too late for him. Too late for him. Writing combatants, what do you think about it?